Hey, I'm not so a strainer, and what about the lost world? Let's get into it. Pokemon has a lot of different forms of media, and while they are mostly only connected through the creatures we know and love, there are sometimes crossovers, especially between the anime and the main series of video games, something seen more recently with the release of Dadazarud and back in the day with things like Ash's Greninja. One thing that those different forms of media have that I believe never crossed to our adventures in the console are exclusive locations, be them towns, cities, forests and even different dimensions. While the anime might be what you think of first when you think about places that you want to visit, for a long time now I have wondered about a place that came to us in card form, the Lost World. The Pokemon TCG is mostly talked about nowadays because of the crazy prices and the scoping issues that have been plaguing the community, leaving its actual content and design playing second fiddle to those problems. Still, there's no lack of originality and exclusive places in the card game, and they mostly come to us in the form of stadium cards. Usually, these stadium cards take the form of cities, landmarks or gyms that we know from our main series adventures, but from time to time we get a glimpse at a concept that we wish we could visit. Places like the Faded Town, the Forest of Giant Plants, the Dimensional Valley and the Thunder Mountain for example, look fantastic and feel like the whole concept around them would work wonders in video game format, though none of them have any specific lore or implied lore behind them. That spot is saved for the Lost World, a beautiful card from the Call of Legends set. This card had just been rotated when I started playing the Pokemon TCG quite a few years ago, though its art immediately caught my eye and I had to look more into it. That's when I found cards like Seeker from AGS Triumphant and Lost Remover also from Call of Legends. There was a clear connection between these cards in terms of their concept, and the more I looked into it the more I felt eager to explore them. But to this day I never had a chance. The fact that it created a different area of the game called the Lost Zone, where cards became mostly inaccessible, gave it a sense of dread as if it was the end of the line. What could that place be? What was the Seeker? Why was Mew looming in the back of that card? What was the Lost Remover and why could it essentially strip Pokemon of their energy? Mind you, this was before the Gen 7 games, so all we knew in terms of other dimensions was a distortion world, and that was clearly not what we were looking at. Then we had various Pokemon that could interact with it, since that was a mechanic and they had to use it in some way. The one that was clearly made for it, even though it wasn't the most successful one, was the ghost type fan favorite Gengar. And that got me thinking. We've always seen ghost type Pokemon being able to disappear and appear, even recently in new Pokemon Snap we've seen Gengar using a portal in order to move from place to place. Could that be the world they visit when they are in between our reality and theirs? It's possible, ghosts are often referred to as lost souls and that was the lost world after all. And that's when it clicked even further, we've seen people living in Ultra Megalopolis, which means that humans, or at least known Pokemon beings, are a possibility outside our dimension. So the seeker could be someone that gatekeeps the lost world, keeping only ghost types capable of getting in and out and all the rest unable to ever leave. The reason the seeker is after Mew is because of how Mew can use the moves of those who are trapped inside the lost zone or the lost world. That is not how it is supposed to be and the seeker wants to end it. Maybe that's where all the souls that possess lost children, lost travelers and lost dolls come from, the place that creates the ghost type Pokemon. Or maybe the lost world holds something evil and the seeker is afraid that it gets out, just like Ultra Megalopolis was the prison for Necrozma. Of course this is all headcanon, but it's such a mysterious, dreadful, dangerous looking place with such strange cards connected to it, that I cannot help but wonder what it would be like visiting it and adventuring through it. Maybe you have a Pokemon horror game that plays a story in the lost world as we try to escape from the seeker and its army of ghost Pokemon. Just an idea though. Anyway, did you know about the lost world? Would you like a Pokemon horror game? Let me know in the comments down below. And now like the video if you like it, dislike if you don't and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more Pokemon content. Also ring the bell so you know when the next video is out. You can follow me on social media, Twitch, we stream there Thursday to Sunday and join our Discord, all the links are in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all on the next one.